This is the flag of Belarus, but you may also have seen this other flag of Belarus being used by a lot of the time protesters and those outside of the country itself. And in this video, I want to make a video about why that is. What are the origins of these two flags and what do they mean to the people that fly them? Well, I have recently on this channel talked more about Belarus, particularly with their connection to the invasion of Ukraine by Russia and whether they would actively be joining in that invasion rather than just aiding Russia. Russian soldiers, which to date they have not yet done. Now, we need to go back to the year 1995, and that is when this flag was first introduced as the Belarusian flag, although the flag that it largely replaced was one that looked incredibly similar and was used during the Soviet period from 1951 all the way up to 1991 when there was a brief four-year interlude. Now, the dictator of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, was the one that pushed through this new flag idea. But there are a few elements, and he described this flag as being consisting of a red portion, which was for freedom or sacrifice, and a green portion, which was about life. However, the main interesting thing about the Belarusian flag is this design, which in Belarusian is actually called a ruchnik. And these are traditional woven cloth that are made by, most of the time, by Slavic women in this part of Eastern Europe, which are used for special ceremonial events, and so have become emblematic of the region and indeed of the country itself. Now, this one in particular was designed by Matrona Markevich who made the pattern in 1917. However, her story is a rather tragic one, as 20 years later in 1937, her husband would be killed by Soviet forces as an effort to de the population, basically a sponsored genocide against a portion of the free peasants. However, the story of the flag would live on, even though the original of this design of this Ruchnik was probably destroyed either by the NKVD, so the Soviet operation, or by the Germans or in the chaos of the Second World War. However, the story goes on as Matrona Markevich's brother was called Mikhail Katsar, and he was actually a part of the new commission of ethnography and folklore and was part of the team that decided on a new flag. And so in 1951, he put forward his sister's design of the Ruchnik to go on this flag, which obviously is a clear inspiration for the modern Belarusian flag. The main difference being that instead of being red on white, this design is is quite clearly white on red on the Ruchnik, at the hoist of the flag. And this would be used as the Belarusian flag of the Soviet Republic from 1951 to 1991. Now, before that, they had several other flags as the Belarusian Soviet Union was a little bit older. And these are basically your kind of classic uh, early communist flags, lots of red and big gold writing and a hammer and sickle. So really, in the end, the uh, Belarusian Soviet flag was a little bit different with its Ruchnik. However, in 1991, with the fall of the Soviet Union and the disintegration of many of these Soviet states, including Belarus, this flag once again came to the fore and became the national flag of Belarus. So let's now dive into the second Belarusian flag. The flag in its current form was designed by Klavidzi Dush Dushevsky. And this flag goes back to 1970. However, its design is, or the inspiration behind its design, is quite a bit older, going back to the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, which featured a white knight on a white horse on a red background. And of course, later, the Grand Duchy of Poland, Lithuania, and the Commonwealth, which also feature the colors of red and white very prominently, as do many of the countries of Central Europe to this day, including, of course, Poland. This flag became official in 1918 when it was hoisted and used by the Belarusian Democratic Republic, a state that emerged in the chaos of the First World War in Eastern Europe. This we can see in this picture where the flag, the white red white flag, is being hoisted in uh, the country of Belarus as it was then, although it would be short-lived because fairly soon afterwards both the Soviet Union as part of the Russian Civil War and actually the Polish Second Republic would, in a strange twist of history, partition the country of Belarus or the Belarusian Democratic Republic into half going into Poland and the other half going into the Soviet Union. And so this flag disappeared as the official flag of a state. However, the government would continue 
continue in exile, adding two black bands that separate the white and the red sections, and this would go on for several decades. However, the flag story doesn't end there, and it actually takes a bit of a controversial turn, because in 1939, of course, the Second World War started in Europe, with the German and the Soviet occupation of Poland, but very soon after that, the Germans would also invade the Soviet Union with Operation Barbarossa, and so large parts of Belarus, or I think actually all of Belarus, would be captured by German forces. And when they did so, they set up a collaborationist government to rule for the Germans as a kind of puppet state. And this government actually adopted the old white red white flag of the Belarusian Democratic Republic to be used as their own flag in combination with the Germans and some of the terrible things that they carried out when they were in power. I should note, however, that the designer of the flag, Klavdizy, Klavdzi, I think, Klavdzi Dush, Dushevsky, was not a fan of the Germans at all and fought in the resistance against the German occupation. So that isn't to equate this flag 100% with the Nazis and the German occupation in Belarus, as, as ever, what depends is how people use the flag, and even the creator was very much against the uh, Nazis taking over and using this flag for their own ends, but ultimately it was used by them. An interesting side note about Duj Dushevsky is that he was actually ar arrested in 1940 by the Soviets in the country for being a Belarusian nationalist, but he was then freed when the Germans invaded. However, in 1943, he was re-arrested, this time by the Germans, because he'd been hiding Jews in his home, and for that, he was sent to a death camp. However, he would go on to survive the war, but would be arrested once again in 1952 by Soviet troops for being an active Belarusian nationalist and sentenced to 20 years in concentration camp labor in Siberia, although he would be released after three years in 1955. So he had quite a colorful life and actually, in a way, makes for quite a good role model for Belarusians in my point of view. But in any case, the Belarusian white, red and white flag was banned by Soviet authorities, being seen as both a symbol of Nazi collaboration and one of Belarusian nationalism, both of which were a big no-no during the Soviet period. However, towards the end of the 1980s in the Glasnost period and the Solidarność movement in Poland springing up, this flag started to be seen more frequently at protests and other events inside and outside of Belarus. And in 1991, when the Soviet government fell, this became the new flag of the state. However, it wasn't to last. What happened? The change officially occurred in 1995 and was very much driven by the new president, Alexander Lukashenko, who two years earlier had already tried to hold a referendum to change the flag, but had failed to gain the power to do so. He proposed to make this the new flag of Belarus, and although this was never accepted, he did manage to get through a referendum on the different flag putting forward the old Belarusian flag with the white and red and this new design that was clearly very heavily based on the old Soviet Belarusian flag for the reasons that he believed it would bring the youth joyful memories of more pleasant times under the Soviets, which shows you which direction he was going in. Now, the result of the referendum was very much disputed with many opposition parties claiming that it was entirely rigged and that fewer than half of the uh, country's population or less than half of the country's population actually voted in this referendum. But in any case, the referendum showed the result that over three quarters of the uh, voters had voted for the new design against the old design. And so the old design was once again lost to history, or more accurately, lost to the opposition, just as it has for over a hundred years now in Belarus. It did also inspire a new flag very recently, which is the flag on the right, the Russian peace flag as it's called. And if you want a video about that, well, you're in luck because I in fact already have a video about that, which you can watch in the description below. 
Belarus's role in the Ukraine invasion is particularly interesting and important. Both the side of the opposition, which have formed numerous volunteer battalions to fight against the Russians, but also the role of the official government in Belarus in supporting Russia, but not yet actively fighting alongside them. Some of you may have seen my recent video about the alliance between Russia and Belarus and how it ties into the invasion of Ukraine, but there's a few important things that I didn't mention there, because as a result of this conflict, Conflict, Europe faces massive power failures heading into the winter. And now Bloomberg is predicting a 100% chance of a recession in the US, which will of course create shockwaves around the world. Understandably, people are scrambling to preserve their wealth somewhere outside of volatility's reach. For our parents' generation, that would mean investing in gold or real estate. But historic mortgage rates are driving the real estate market off a proverbial cliff, and gold is only a stopgap with near zero growth during normal conditions. However, there is a third option, an asset which thrives during times like these when traditional markets are suffering and when the economy is booming. With low correlation to stocks, inflation hedging qualities and exceptional resilience, fine art. Morgan Stanley says this art often experiences less price volatility than stocks, and data shows it's outpaced the S&P 500 for the last 26 years by 131%. The last time inflation was this high, it was one of only three things to gain value, and not just by a little bit either, but an average of over 17% per year. That's why Masterworks is flooded with demand as people are looking to diversify. They've become the biggest buyer in the art market, offering shares in contemporary art by the greats from Banksy to Picasso. This art's resilience is how they've managed to produce results. So it's no surprise that demand for Masterworks is so high that there's a waiting list. But you can skip that by clicking on the link in the description below. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching this video about the flag or flags of Belarus. Let me know in the comments below which flag do you prefer aesthetically, uh, potentially even politically, and why? I, I must say, and this probably won't surprise too many people, I do like the older flag of Belarus, the white, red, and white, because of that shared history that it has with some of the other states in Eastern and Central Europe, calling back to the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and working together with other nations, rather than looking back to the Soviet period and much of the modern politics that's going on today. Having said that, I do very much like the fact that the other design has the Ruchnik on it, has that sort of callback to more sort of... Uh, elements of, uh, of folk tradition and uh, the uh, the embroidery that was used or the woven patterns that were made because I do think aesthetically it looks very nice and obviously the the story behind it is very interesting and quite tragic in uh, in many ways anyway do check out masterworks the kind sponsors of this video and have a look at my other videos on flags on the war in Ukraine and many other topics if you are new remember to hit the bell icon because then YouTube will actually tell you when I upload which is marvelous and subscribe or subscribe if you're new hit the thumbs up and i think i've said everything that youtubers are supposed to say these days so before i say anything controversial thanks all for watching i've been hilbert and this has been the history ta-da